So yesterday, this video got throttled. Why? Because a certain Aquaman starlet's own father is going to testify against them. That's right. That is going to absolutely wreck them, and they know it. See? She threw this man under the bus to try to distance herself from him. Why? Because he is a weak link. He has a very sordid past. He's allegedly made some statements that, woo, man, they do not work out in her favor. You and I, we're going to talk about all of that today to crazy times, huh? Crazy times indeed. So hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you were doing excellently. And just to know, we have a comic book and crowdfunding now. Link is in the description. We can desperately use your help. This is how we maintain sponsor-free living. We're beholden to no one. And those companies that don't like you, yeah, walk away from them. More on that at the end of the video. So like I was saying, that certain Aquaman starlet cannot be happy about this. I'm sure they're angry. I'm sure they're feeling the pressure and panic. Why? Because their dad is going to end up giving testimony. And that guy, well, he allegedly said some very colorful things. Now, skipping over his background for just a second, because that, whoo, man, it is a mess. But we have some big questions come up from one David J. Kalaki, who is that guy. Well, you can see it in number three here. At the request of JD, I helped facilitate an agreement with the network to restore and customize his wife's 1968 Mustang on an episode of the series Overhauling. I was successful in doing so, and the filming it was revealed on December 20th, 2014. So, this guy, he had actually a long-standing argument with that certain Aquaman starlet, and her father's going to come in. See, according to him, his interactions with her, they don't go very well. I mean, listen to this. Then we'll get to the dad. On one occasion, I had the most unusual and unsettling experience with that certain Aquaman starlet. After installing a new sound system in her Mustang, she asked me to visit her at Redacted. She wanted me to instruct her on how to operate the touchscreen and also how to interface her iPhone with the onboard system, make hands-free calls, map driving, etc., etc., when I arrived precisely at that point in time, she was not there. It would be three hours before she came down from her penthouse to the parking garage. She, When she came down, we found the Mustang. She got in the driver's seat. I have got in the front passenger seat. She seemed to be in a very happy mood. We spent a moment exchanging greetings. Then, well, she says something weird. Ooh, here we are alone together in a parking lot in a dark parking garage. We could do anything in here and nobody would see us. She added to that statement. However, I am uncertain today of what exactly she added. I was speechless. I did not make any reply. I didn't make any eye contact. She was wearing a white t-shirt, denim jeans, dark shoes. My only response was to say, okay, let me show you how this sound system works. So, he pulls it up. There's actually a name on it, Dr. David Kipper. Now, he knows Dr. David Kipper because Dr. David Kipper was a client of his. So he says, oh, you know Dr. David Kipper too. Now, apparently things go sideways after that and they continue to go sideways when two years later, he actually tries to get his money from that certain Aquaman starlet. And instead of getting money because JD is no longer paying for it, he gets a lot of nasty, nasty words. And that includes nasty words from the father. This is how he comes into this statement. Now, the thing that I find very interesting about David H. is that certain Aquaman Starlet threw him under the bus hardcore. She said everything that I said about JD, well, we experienced it with him as well. And that's fascinating considering they have a continuing relationship. In fact, it's brought up right here. A lot of redacted words, by the way. Very colorful language. But yeah, check this out. So during the attempt to facilitate repairs, modifications, and additions to the the Mustang, I received many text messages and phone calls from that certain Aquaman Starlet's father, Mr. David H. After this separation of that certain Aquaman Starlet and JD, he became very bitter towards JD. Of course he does. Listen to why he does, by the way. During a phone call with me, he stated, that bleeping bleep of bleep is bleeping me too because I'm supposed to get 10% of the money and without it, I can't produce the movie I was going to make. So he had planned to cash in. He had planned to cash in with JD's money. He thought he was talking to somebody 
somebody that would be sympathetic to that, not tell anybody about it. Yeah. He also said, he's ruining my baby girl's career and blackballing her in Hollywood. So, somebody that was accused, just like JD, and yet, well, hey, there's my baby girl. I was going to make money out of her, and now I can't. Yeah, that says something too, doesn't it? He also says, this made headlines, and big ones, by the way. When I go get to him, I'm going to beat the bleep out of him and I'm from Texas, and men from Texas, they carry 45s. And he ends the statement with this, and J.D. is going to meet the bleeping end of mine. Now, this guy, he wants to give Mr. David H. an out. He wants to tell him, you know, hey, this stuff, it needs to stop, too. So he says, I told Mr. David H. that it sounded to me like he was drunk. And he said, yeah, maybe I am. Maybe I'm going to shove a whiskey bottle up your bleep. So I strongly advised him to stop making, let's just say, certain types of threats about JD, certain types of threats against me. And then he said, you know, after I got off the phone, I called Mr. Murphy, that would be Kevin Murphy, the property manager and friend of JD at the time, instantly, and reported what Mr. David H. had threatened advising him to report it to JD's attorney. He assured me that he would. Having been raised by a deputy sheriff homicide detective, I knew to take such things like this, we're going to say, very seriously. Now, that by itself would probably get someone thrown under the bus, but the criminal record, that's right, criminal record that belongs to him, yeah, that, it causes a lot of problems. See, this guy, he was actually arrested for quite a few things one time, but one of those things was dogfighting. I mean, you could see it mentioned right here. Here and after, style defendant did then and therefore unlawfully, intentionally, and knowingly cause one animal to wit a dog to fight with another dog to wit a dog. So, he managed dog fights, and those, they had horrific outcomes. Now, what I find fascinating about this isn't necessarily his criminal conduct, the fact that he was arrested, but rather how she attributed things like that to J.D. She would say, well, we had animals that we shared, and instead of caring or loving them, well, because I loved them, he would do terrible things to them. He would want to put them in microwaves. He would want to hang them out windows. I think that's really telling, considering the skeletons in her closet. And again, it looks like something that she attributed to her father. She's trying to attribute it to someone else. I mean, that... Like I said, that's crazy. And it's going to be interesting to see what her father has to say about all of this stuff, considering she said herself, all of those things that I said about him, my father did them. Yeah, I wonder how he likes to wear that label too. Now, like I said, we have a book in crowdfunding right now. Link is in the description. We could use your help. We're 29 backers away from 700. This is how we maintain sponsor-free living. We're beholden to no one, so we can talk about this. This and other stuff. Also, we can give alternatives to the businesses that do not respect you. Again, check that out. Thank you. Thank you for being on this channel as well. I'm going to end here. Thank you again. See you soon.